Good morning, C3 Church. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's give them a hand clap of praise as we start this morning. I'm going to read Romans 5, verse 3 through 5. It says, And rejoice in hope that the glory of God, and not only that, but we also glory we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit in this place, that you freely give the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our souls. Let it dwell in this place. Lord, lead us as we worship you here today. We thank you, Father. We call upon your name. It's all about you today, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Here we go.
found Cause nothing stands between me and my God And the fear that was my prison Is no longer where I live Cause nothing stands between me and my God And there's no place I go that He is not Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We'll be dancing through the darkness, cause we believe it. Every stronghold has to break at the name of Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The ground below. So 
Yes, Father. We thank you for your spirit, for alivening our souls here. Lord, we're going to continue to speak your name, Jesus. Lord, help us to get in a place of heart posture to worship you, continuing to push every distraction aside as we speak Jesus over our lives. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus some of you that are going through a moment 
And this last song, and this song talked about it. Pete, I'd like you to kill the lights for me for a second. Sorry to my camera guys. Um, so just kill the, kill the stage lights for a second. And the last song talked about when I'm walking through the valley. And this song's talking about in the darkness. And Pete, just slide that main slide. Let's go all black for a second. Because there are some of you that are going through a moment that's all black. But what it says is, when I'm walking through the valley, your presence is around me. Right? Because, and then this song says, when I speak the name of Jesus. So how many of you had a little kid? I had a little kid a couple weeks ago. And all of a sudden I hear this name. Daddy! Daddy! And I'm like, where is that noise coming from? Daddy! Daddy! And I listen. And I wake up and I hear this voice. And I'm look, I walk to her room. Daddy! There's no daddy in the bedroom. She was downstairs. She's two. She got downstairs. You can bring the lights back up, Pete. But there's a moment where you can be in the darkness and you can say, Daddy! Daddy! And he's going to respond. Because when we speak the name of Jesus, right? I don't care how dark your moment is. I don't care how bad your time is. I don't care how, how scary it is. How under, you don't understand it. There's a presence that's around you. There's a Jesus that's walking with you. And the verse, the verse I was going to read is Psalm 23. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So, he, when Jesus is in the valley, the big thing about that that we sometimes miss, we just read that verse, we miss it. It says, Yea, though I walk and lay down and die in the valley of the shadow of death. No, it doesn't say that. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley. So there are some of you that are in that dark moment. There are some of you that got no options. You got no option but Jesus. But I want to tell you right now, he's with you in the valley. He's got your hand in the valley. If you're broken enough, he's carrying you in the valley. And as we sing this, man, I want you to speak that name of Jesus like you're in the pitch black going, Jesus, come on. Jesus, Jesus, I need you right now, Jesus. So there are some of you as we speak this, as we sing this out, man, I want you to just say the name of Jesus. God, we just thank you that you are in the valley with us, God. God, we thank you that there is no, there's no valley too dark. There's no place too deep. There's no heartache too big. There's no anything too great, God. You're in the midst of it with us. And so, God, we thank you for that as we speak the name of Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Jesus. I speak the one more song. This is a newer song called Bless God in every situation that we have. Just speaking to voice of what Elder Daniel said is 
speaking to every situation, even in whether the lowest of lows or the highest of highs, or even just in the middle, even stagnant. Lord, give us life as we sing this to you. We honor you with this song in Jesus' name.
been done by you that we don't have to live a life sulking or in defeat. Lord, we can live a life in victory. Lord, no matter the circumstance, even through the week, if you're feeling tough, just start to sing his praises. Start to speak his name. Your life will change, I guarantee it. Because you're calling on Jesus, the healer, the provider, the redeemer, and he sent the Holy Spirit for you to live a life better than what the world has. But we speak it forth and we're thankful for this message today that it would be that unending supply in our lives that we need to live a life confidently with you. Lord, we thank you for everything that has been done here. And we continue to praise you through it. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen, amen. Come on, give him a hand, a couple of praise. Hallelujah. Wow, we're so glad to be together worshiping God. So great to see all of your faces here, all the seats being filled. Why don't you turn to your neighbor at this time and greet them with the love of Jesus. Welcome to C3 Church. Can we just praise Jesus again? Give him a hand Woo! clap of praise for the amazing yeah. worship we had this morning. We are so glad that you are with us here this morning. We welcome everybody that's joining us online, being safe and staying out of this winter snowstorm that we're about to have this afternoon. But we are a church where you can belong and become. Belong to the family of God and become all that he's created us to be. We are so, so glad that you've decided to come and worship with us this morning. Yeah, amen. We're so uplifted here already. We're praised for that. Uh, Easter Sunday is next Sunday, y'all. Good Friday and Easter services. We're thankful for that. So please find one of these cards. There might be some handed out to you at the end of service. As you leave, please take them. Invite your neighbor, your family, your friend, whoever it may be, and say, hey, you really need to go to this. Because not just to fill a seat, but to be changed by Jesus and his Holy Spirit. Amen. So we believe for that. Again, Good Friday services this Friday at 7 p.m. at both locations, Ellsworth and Hudson, and also Easter Sunday is at 9 a.m. in both locations, as well as 11 a.m. in Hudson as well. So please don't miss that. You've got multiple opportunities to come together and also spread the word about his good news and have an invite card. This is for you to give to one another, not amongst us, but obviously people who have never been or who need to return again. So let's not forget that, all right? Thank you. Now, uh, also we wanted to shout out that we're not just a Sunday church, right? Church is not supposed to be held in this building on Sunday mornings. Uh, so we just wanna say we've got multiple programming for everybody here. We've got our Wednesday night programming with Belong Classes, um, GPY and Kids Club, something for the whole family. So get here Wednesday nights. Also reach out to our small group lead team and, and join a small group, get connected that way. We also have men's and women's events. We've got a young adults group that meets every Tuesday. Get connected. If you need to, fill out a connect card and we'll find a place for you. But we don't want you to stay stagnant on a Sunday morning, but we want you to grow, get rooted in Christ and grow with the family of believers. So please do that. And now this time we're gonna invite Pastor Angel on stage to, for offering. Great job, thank you so much. I feel excitement in this place this morning. What a great day. God has been so good. He's so kind. His love is generous. 
His forgiveness is generous, and He calls us to be an example of that and be generous in our lives with our time, our talent, our love, our attention, our affection, and also in our resources and giving. I was reading this morning in Matthew verse or chapter 6, verse 33, to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things. Everything that we need, brothers and sisters, will be added unto us. And that we don't need to worry about tomorrow, but we need to put our faith in God. And he has proven himself faithful to me over and over and over again. I just get excited about what he's going to do next. Let's pray together and thank him for that. Lord, I thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness and your mercy that endures forever. God, I thank you that when we seek you first, you are faithful. We take you at your word at C3 Church, God. And you are faithful. You have been so kind to us, God. You have, you have met every single need. Lord, we want to give you praise and honor. We remember, Lord, where you have brought us from and what you have done for us. God, we would not be anywhere without your love and your grace and your provision. And so, Lord, we are fully aware that without you, we can do nothing. Would you bless my brothers and sisters today as we remember God and as we give, we sow our seeds into your kingdom. Lord Jesus, your word says the righteous is never forsaken and his seed will not beg bread. Lord, you are our provider. And we thank you in advance, God, for what you're going to do. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have the opportunity to let the light shine to those around us, God, to our community, to the people that belong to this assembly, Lord, and to those around the world. We thank you, God, and bless your people as we walk in faith, believing you for what we can't see yet. We thank you. Bless this offering and bless the people in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody here this morning. I'm Pastor Matt, senior lead pastor at C3 Church. We want to welcome everybody in here who's here in person. And my, what a great crowd when it's supposed to get a snownami out there. We're hardy in these parts. No snow is going to keep us back, right? So we want to welcome everybody. And those online this morning who are going to see this, who are watching, we welcome you in our online campus and also. Uh, those that are watching at the Pierce County Jail this morning, we bless you. And it's just great to be together, everybody. We're together in his spirit, not just in spirit, but in his spirit. How many are thankful for that, to be in his spirit, right? Makes all the difference. Makes all the difference. So we're excited about this week, this coming week, next Friday night here at 7 o'clock for our Good Friday service and also in Hudson at 7 o'clock. And just a quick note to make sure everyone was aware of that. We're just having one service here next Sunday, and that's at 9 o'clock. Because of the small space we have in Hudson, we had to go to two services there at 9 and 11 in Hudson. But here, it's just one at 9 o'clock, and it's going to be standing room only and packed out. It's going to be a great time. And so I just uh, agree with what the announcement was already said this morning about take those cards and pass them out. You don't know who that might be just waiting to be invited to church. I look back at my life and a lot of the people here, it almost seems like a, a accident. I wouldn't say an accident, but a coincidence or whatever that your path crossed with somebody and how you wound up here. What I've learned is God is very sophisticated on how he reaches us. And it can be a simple thing as somebody reaching out to you with an invite card to come might be just what they're looking for, just what they're needing in their life. Don't be afraid of rejection. Jesus was rejected by his very own. 
but it's that one that might say, yes, I want to come. I want to experience God. I want a closer walk with God, or maybe I don't even know Jesus, and I would like to know him. And so by just taking that simple action of walking your faith out and inviting somebody might make a difference in someone's life, and we'll be prayed up and ready to roll here, and we believe that the service will touch them and fill them. Amen? So I'm asking you to join me in prayer for our weekend services coming up that the Lord would be gracious to us and anoint us and bless every part of it and give our leaders wisdom as we prepare. We appreciate your prayers. Amen? Well, man, what a great team that we had leading us in every week. Just a great group. And the, the, the singing and the, the drumming and the guitars and bass and everything was just so well this morning as is every Sunday morning. And man, we are so blessed with all the talented people that God has put in our church. Amen. They use those talents to help us to, to worship and, and praise and, and fill this place with worship. You're going to look really hard and long time to find a spirit-filled place like this. I'm telling you, the worship is so powerful. Amen. So I got to keep up in my game so I can match that level when I preach. Somebody said amen. amen. And you got to keep growing, right? How many want to keep growing? How many want to keep getting better at what you do, right? Isn't that great that we have that opportunity? So this morning, I've been on this theme. I've been in this vein, if you will, in this zone that the Holy Spirit just won't lift off me. And so I know it's for people here this morning, people online. It's this whole aspect of God filling us. So this morning, I want to preach a message called Be Filled. Everybody say, Be Filled. Uh, how many here are ready for your life to change for the good, for the better? More? How many are ready for your family maybe to change? How many are ready for our world to change? Amen? Starts with us being filled. So let's not leave church this morning without being filled. I'm reading from Ephesians chapter 5. In verse 18, we've read this scripture the last three weeks, I believe, and we'll read it again this morning, just as one of our key scriptures. It says, don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. But the alternative, the better is instead, be inebriated with the Holy Spirit, right? Be filled, not as the old saying is, just a little dabble, do you? There's people that want just a little bit of Jesus and just a little bit of church and just a little bit. But I don't know about you, but I want all of Jesus that I can get. I want as much Holy Spirit as he'll pour into my life. So the Bible admonishes us as believers. That book there is written to the church at Ephesus. So it's written to us as well. It says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled. And in the Greek, the connotation is, to keep on being filled, that it's not just once, but it's many, many times. So I had the vision this morning when I drove up to church as this being like a big old gas station where they would fill your tank up. How do you remember those stations where you'd pull up, you'd say fill her up, and then someone fill your tank up? Man, I feel like we're, we're there this morning. We're, we've pulled our lives up, our cars up to the filling station, and we're like, Lord, Fill me up. Fill me up with your word. Fill me up with your love. Fill me up with your presence. You know, lots of people are exhausted in life. Maybe you're here this morning and you have an exhaustion that permeates out of your life. And I'd be wise to tell you that it's important for us to be organized with our schedules and make sure that we're not too busy to be wise with how we set up our calendars, etc. But I would suggest to you this morning that really life has always been busy. I don't know how it was in Bible times, but they were running around and cleaning their gardens and planting and they were just stressed out and busy as we are today. Life has not changed that much. But Jesus promised a life energy, so to speak, a life 
source that even when we were busy, even when we were having a lot of deadlines and having a lot to do in our life, Jesus promised us something that would fix the exhaustion in our life. Because I would tell you, exhaustion does not come from the outside. Exhaustion comes from the inside. Because when you're filled on the inside, it doesn't matter how much you have to do. There's a life source that's flowing that gives you a positive outlook, that gives you a sense about you that is less than exhausted, but is life-giving. So lots of people are exhausted today because they are filling themselves with the wrong stuff. They're exhausted today because they're filling themselves with the wrong stuff. Now, I have some news for you. I'll start with some bad news, then we'll move some good news. I'm going to write for the bad first. You're always going to be busy. Life is life. Life is always going to be life. It's not going away. In fact, when I looked at the calendar, it's election year. So the crazy stuff is not, it's not stopping. It's not going away. It's going to amp up even more. That's the bad news. How many are with me on that? But the good news is, Jesus said, He would give us a source to our lives that would give us unending joy and would give us unending energy in a way that fuels the rest of our lives. Now, we as human beings, we we have this default setting that we go to a lot that's so easy to go to when we get busy, when we get overwhelmed. And that's like the Nike saying that says, just do it. That... We're just going to pull ourselves up and we're just going to do it. Especially around here, we're hardworking folk, man. We, we get it done. If you're going to build a factory, you build it in this area because we're worker bees. We work, 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 work in these parts. We have this default setting that even when we're wore out and even when we're overwhelmed, we resort to just doing it. But how many are with me this morning that You're at a point in your life where you just don't want to do it. You want good life. You want good living. You want your life to matter. I can tell you confidently this morning that the Lord has a path for us where our life can be filled with goodness. Our life can be filled with joy. Doesn't mean we won't have problems. Doesn't mean we won't have trials. Doesn't mean there won't be tough times. But I'm telling you, going through them with Jesus is a lot better than going through them without Jesus. So in this default setting, it's good when it comes to our discipline and and getting things done. But in our spiritual living, and our spiritual life, it's a different story. In fact, Jesus said in the book of John, without me, you can do nothing. That's a strong statement. He said, without me, it's zip, zero, nada. Not a thing. But then in another place in Scripture, He said, with me, anything is possible. With me, anything is possible. So you have to know, even though you have a default setting and you might want to write this down, it's simple, but it's so profound that God never called us to do this walk by ourselves and our own strength. God never intended us to live this life and walk this walk in our own strength by ourselves. But actually... The Bible is full of scriptures and phrases. That's the complete opposite, where Jesus basically called out and give and has given us an open invitation. An open invitation. In other words, heaven's resources are always available to us. And what's so sad is when we don't reach for them. What's so sad is when all that storehouse of heaven is available and we would choose something else or we would choose our own strength when the word of God says, just just come to me. Just come to me. How many times have we just not obeyed that and just come to him? I want you to know this morning, hear the word. Just come to him. 
You may say, well, Pastor Matt, I'm not a professional Christian. Well, there are no professional Christians. You might say, I don't have it all figured out. Well, nobody has it all figured out. But we have the word of God that says, just come to me. Just come to me. Don't come to yourself, but come to me. Jesus says, come to me. In that famous passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, it says, come to me all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. The Passion Translation says, are you weary carrying a heavy burden? Come to me. I will refresh your life. Isn't that good? I will refresh your life. I, for I am your oasis. Do you need a refreshing? Do you need something that will give you energy, that will give you joy, that will give you peace? Rich and satisfying living is what Jesus proclaimed that he would give us. John chapter 10 and verse 10, one of my favorite Bible verses that I use very often because it's so clear, it's so clean. It just states the truth. It says the thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal and slaughter and destroy. Jesus said, but I have come to give you everything in abundance more than you expect. Satan probably promises a lot. Our flesh promises a lot. This world promises a lot and always underdelivers. But God promises and overdelivers. God promises and overdelivers. He said that we would live in abundance. Life in abundance in its fullness until you overflow. One of my favorite things to, to watch, and maybe now with the snow coming, we'll have some streams. That will be overflowing. How many enjoy an overflowing stream? I love to just sit there and watch it. I love to take in that flow, that, that energy, that, that God-like thing that's happening as that river overflows its bank. Now, we don't want to get too wild and hurt people or hurt farms and fields and homes and whatever, but you know what I'm talking about. When it's flowing pretty good, there's something there that, that just gets you, and I believe it's God trying to show us, man, I want to fill your life that way. I want to fill your life with joy and forgiveness and radical things that will produce a, 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 that will produce life that that doesn't exhaust you, but that continues to fill you, that continues to motivate you, that continues to make it happen in your life. Angel and I, you know, sometimes our schedule gets pretty full, and and we it seems we're to to run out of energy and. And now we're not spring chickens anymore, if you haven't noticed. And so, I mean, age is relative. And, but there's something about the kingdom of God that keeps us moving, that keeps us energized, that keeps us focused, that keeps us full of life. If you're saying, you know, I think some Americans are just bored. How many here are bored with life? Nobody? Well, that's fantastic. I don't believe it. You were too afraid to raise your hand, probably. But I'm telling you right now, right next to you, right here, right in this moment, is something that can really add a bounce to your step. And it's the kingdom of God that has no end. And planting yourself and growing and getting a hold of what God is doing. Seeing God touch people, making a difference. Wow, it will spruce up your life. It will add something to your life that nothing ever will. An open invitation. Come unto me all. Doesn't matter who you, what you've done, where you've been, all of those things. No, none of that matters. Jesus said, Anyone can come to me and drink. He promises a rich and satisfying life. So the first truth that I want you to grab hold of, and maybe if you're taking notes, you'd write this down and remember this, that God does indeed want to fill us. 
God wants to fill us. We don't always believe that. And that's when we can run low in our own strength. Is we somehow think God is against us, but I preached my guts out two weeks ago that God is for you. Quit thinking the opposite. God is for you. You say, oh, Pastor Matt, I had a bad week. So what? God is for you even when you've had a bad week because the last of Romans chapter 8 says nothing will ever separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. And so every time you fall, he picks you back up, dusts you off, and says, try it again. Like a kid trying to ride a bike. Would any of us here who have children, when we're trying to teach our kid to ride a bike, would we just throw the bike down and say, you're an idiot, you can't do it, just knock it off. And we make God off to be that way. And the Bible says in Proverbs that the righteous fall seven times and get back up. The righteous, the unrighteous are not, so they quit. It's righteous, hear this, write this down. It's righteous to not be a quitter. Because God never quits on us. God will never quit on you. He will always strive to be with you. He will always strive to comfort you. He will always strive to help you. Come on, could you put your hands together to that truth this morning? It's the truth. Get it in your heart. God desires to fill us. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 there, that famous chapter, says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Another word for blessed is happy. So you could take that blessed out of there and say happy. Happy are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. So sometimes the verses kind of seem, they're almost flip-flopped. And so uh, they will be filled. It's, it's like a promise of, of being filled. But really, I think what it's saying is, is you will be fulfilled. You will be fulfilled. In other words, you will be satisfied. There's all kinds of people who aren't as satisfied as you. As I was, as I was putting this together, my heart just thought of, thought of circumstances and thought of situations where I know people are not satisfied. And boy, they wish they could just come to church. They wish they could just hear the word of God. They wish they could just praise the Lord because they're out there striving and trying and they're not filled and they're not happy. I'm calling you out this morning, whether you're hearing me online or here and, and you haven't completely put both feet in the kingdom of God, I'm telling you this morning, it is a worthwhile decision to say, you know what, I'm going all in with Jesus. I am, I am crawling over my flesh that wants to do its own thing, and I am sacrificing that, and I'm giving my heart and my mind and my life to Jesus. Come on, is somebody sensing that this morning? Be filled with God. <laughs> Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, happy, for they will live a fulfilled life. They will live a fulfilled life. There was an old song. The lyric was something like, when you've tried everything else, try Jesus. When you've tried everything else, try Jesus. I love this passage of scripture in John chapter 4 always fascinated me it's the woman at the well and there was so many things going on in this chapter and there's so many thoughts and concepts and messages that I could preach but the true meaning of this passage of scripture is very very simple it's like sometimes you crawl all over and miss the whole point here's the point what the woman at the well this woman it had numerous relationships. But she was lost in life. She was searching for something that she couldn't find. And Jesus knew it. Aren't you glad Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves? And she came there and had an intersection with the Messiah. Verse 7 of John 4. She was alone at the time because soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. 
He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. And the woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. And she said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? And Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. Water for life. How many times have we pulled our car up to the wrong station thinking we would get filled? How many times have we lived in the flesh, so to speak, as the Bible talks about our fallen nature, our human nature that deceives us, thinking that this activity or this or whatever would fill us? That's what this woman was in. Basically, she was coming to get water, and Jesus was saying, you've come to get water, but I'm going to tell you, I can give you water where you'll never thirst again. What is the simple message? The simple message is our flesh and everything that it craves in this world will never satisfy, will never fill us. But Jesus said, if you drink of the water I want to give you, you will be filled. So the truth is, God wants to fill us. God wants to fill us. So you might ask, well, Pastor Matt, how am I filled? How am I filled? Well, the first thing is, you have to be ready to be filled. You have to make a decision in your life, if you will, that says, I've tried everything else. I really want something from the Lord. If it's a feeble effort on your part in that you're not willing to give it all to Jesus, you, you won't be filled. And that's why the first word of the gospel is always repent and believe. It is to turn from what you thought would to now turn to Christ. And be filled. So that's that initial step. And when that's happened, then according to Ephesians, it says to keep on being filled. It's not just a one time filling. How many know your your vehicle runs out of gas? For you that have battery charged cars, you still have to charge the battery, right? That goes off too. It's we need. We can be running on fumes. So how do I supercharge my faith? What really charges? What really fills my faith? Here's the answer for you this morning. Abide in his love. Abide in his love. When you, when your motives, when your heart are filled with God's love, it's very filling. To forgive, to bless, to encourage, to edify, oh, it's such a blessing. It fills us. When we pass out the love of God, it makes us more happy. Our flesh says, don't forgive. Our flesh says, look out for yourself. Our flesh says, take, take, take. Jesus says, give, give, give. When you abide in his love. See, true love is other-oriented. It's about blessing those around you. It's about giving to those around you. It's about offering forgiveness. You would have a different week tomorrow morning, and maybe you live this way, and if you do, praise God, I commend you in it. But if you don't, you could have a great week. If you would wake up tomorrow morning and say, who can I bless? What can I do to help somebody else? What are my plans this week to 
to sow into somebody else, to bless somebody else. But how many know a lot of times we get up Monday morning and we're like, all right, back to the rat race and how much money can I make this week? And there's nothing wrong with that. There's everything right with that. But let's not get the cart before the horse because true happiness comes when I live a life of blessing, when I live a life to bless and to sow into other people. Come on, that's good teaching and preaching right there. It'll change your life. That's abiding in his love. 1 John 4, 16 says, and so we know and rely on the love of God, uh, the, the, on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. So the way we're supercharged is living in God's love. If you feel like frowning, smile. If you feel like smacking somebody, hug them. Come on, be filled with God's love. How many know we need that filling? We need that life-giving flow. Amen. Abide in his love. The word abide, it basically means to live together. That's what abiding means. It's an old word that we don't always use, but it, it means you're, you're, you're together. You're doing life together. It's a lifestyle of communion and connection. And relationship, that's what it means to abide. Abide in his love. You want to supercharge your faith? Abide in his words. We're filled by God's word. The, will, the way we top the tank off and put it to overflowing is to abide in his word. John 15 and verse 7 says this. John 15 in verse 7 says, but if you remain, everybody say remain. In me and my words remain in you. Well, you have to know some of God's word for it to remain in you. So start with one bite. Someone said, how do you eat an elephant? Well, one bite at a time. How do you get to know God's word? One chapter at a time, one verse at a time. But it's no excuse to say, well, I'm just... You will, your, your faith will not be supercharged if you don't know the word of God. Don't be a malnutrition, malnourished Christian, but be a very fit, physically fit and filled Christian by feeding on God's word. It's full of protein, somebody said amen. Full of protein for God, for life. Abide in his word. Study his word. Take in his word. Feed on God's word even more of a challenge today because we have so much technology right around us where we can feed on all kinds of things. How many know that's the truth? But make time for God's word and fill yourself with God's word. That's what it is to be abiding in God's word. How do I supercharge my faith? I abide in God's love. I live in his word. I walk in his word. To walk in his word means I live his word out in my life. Very simple thing. How do, how do I abide in God's word? How do I walk in God's word? Look at this. Somebody left me a Ricola up here. Wow. Am I ever blessed? Well, the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. So if you're ticking people off and you're reading the word, let the word change your life and quit ticking people off by speaking so rudely. Because the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. That's what it is to walk in the word. You know, you have to see the word of God is a mirror. You don't necessarily go to the word of God to reinforce your beliefs. There's a time to study doctrine to make sure you're believing correctly. But the devotional everyday reading of God's word, what does it do to us? It changes us. Or when we're open to it, it's like, oh boy, that one hit close to home here. I, I need that. I need to observe that. That's why James says it's like looking into a mirror. It shows you the kind of person that you are and where you need help. And what I've learned is every one of us need help. Amen? Let's just be honest and humble and say we need help. We don't have it all figured out. So when we abide in God's word, we slowly every day become more like Jesus and his word changes our life. Amen. 
Some of you have let other people's words change your life for the negative. Somebody has said something bad about you or spoken something over you, and it's, it's hurt your life. You need to get in God's word and let his word speak over your life. You are loved. You are forgiven. You are worth it. Amen. By in his word. And lastly, this morning, abide in prayer. Everybody say abide in prayer. Have a lifestyle of prayer. Prayer is the most indigenous behavior activity of Christians. That's why the devil fights it so hard. And he wants us to do everything else but pray. Yet he calls us and seeks for us to prayer. What I've, from, what I've felt myself about prayer, and I would suggest a lot of people feel here probably of, of why maybe you don't pray like you wish you could, because I think it's in everybody's heart to pray, every Christian's heart to pray. God puts that desire in there. But we don't feel worthy, and we don't know how to. We don't feel worthy, and we don't know how to. And my instruction for you is to simply start praying. Simply start praying. And here's something that would really help you is, Initially, when you begin to pray, your prayers will be self-centered. That's natural. That's how we're wired, right? We begin to pray for ourselves. If you can remind yourself to turn the switch and begin to pray for others, your, your prayer will really, it'll take wings in a different level. It's, it's fine to pray for yourself. I'm not saying you shouldn't. But a growth in prayer is when you begin to pray for those around you. Pray for me. You know I need a lot of prayer. Put me on your list, right? The promise of God's word in Jeremiah chapter 33, which Jesus quoted in Isaiah. Excuse me, another passage in Isaiah. But in Jeremiah, we're given this call. It says, call unto me and I will answer. And show you the mighty things that I'm going to do. Call unto me and I will answer. Jesus never said that his church should be a house of pre uh, preaching. Never said that it should be a house of worship. Although we know we're to do that and we need to be instructed. But he did say, reciting from Isaiah, that his house should be called a house of prayer. He said it in Matthew chapter 21 and verse 13. And he said it, the prophet Isaiah said it in Isaiah 56 and 7. And I will fill them with joy in my house of prayer. I will accept their burnt offerings and sacrifice because my temple will be called a house of prayer for all Now, we started a prayer class here. Actually, Pastor Angel did a few weeks back. I attended a prayer class this week, and I enjoyed it so much. And in there was one of Angel and I's favorite pastors that we had. We bought a series from them, and he was teaching on prayer. And I believe I was supposed to go to this one because it was, it was basically calling pastors out and church leaders. And we try and do so much, but nothing really is done lasting that's not birthed in prayer. So I had a conviction come over me in that meeting that I want to be said of our church that we won't do nothing without praying for it first. So every Sunday morning, there's intercessory prayer here at Six o'clock. Six thirty. My bad. Six thirty to seven. There's intercessory prayer right here over in that in the admin building. That's so the prayers going in for the church service. This morning at Hudson, they're probably praying right now. A group is gathered to pray for the service. Because if we're doing it, it's just humanity, and we don't want just humanity. 
We want the Lord. Amen? So we're going to practice this more and more. Everything that we do is going to be birthed in prayer. Not that we haven't prayed, but I think we ought to pray more because we want more power, right? We want to be filled more. How many are with me on that? So if you're looking for something on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock over in that middle building, it's chill. It's, you can just sit there and hear the prayers and be filled. And there's no pressure on you to bring forth this masterful prayer or anything of that. It's just a, a prayer meeting where we're learning to pray and meeting together. I'm going to invite you. If you want to come and learn to pray and be a person of prayer, come join us Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock in that building over there. And there's another room we could move into because I have a feeling it's going to get pretty large. Because this is what I've seen at C3 Church. There's an appetite for prayer. There's an appetite for prayer. I sense it. And so join us 7 o'clock. Again, it's, it's just filling. It's not any pressure. It's just life-giving. And you'll be blessed. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6 as you stand with me this morning. This is what the scripture says. But you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. Do you want to know what I believe? God is waiting for you every morning. And how many times has God been there, but you or I were a no-show? God waited. He waited to meet with you. Come on, who would not want to meet with God himself? Jesus said it right here. You wonder why Jesus had so much power and did so many things. He met with the Father every morning. When you pray, go into your room. When you have shut the door. So what is Jesus saying here? Is I think it's kind of cool how specific Jesus is being. What he's saying is, by this verbiage here, he's saying, I want a personal connection and relationship with you. That's what he's saying. It's a secret place that it's you and God and you and God alone. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Nothing will supercharge your faith and fill you as we've been preaching this morning about a secret place when you get alone with God. So one of the tools I use to get alone with God is prayer music. It helps me. I heard of one guy, he literally puts on headphones to, with white nose to cancel out the distraction. How many know there's all kinds of distraction? As soon as you try and get alone with God, you have a temptation. I'm going to see what's going on Facebook. Well, thank you, Lord. Okay. So if you can carve out some time and just start with a little time every day where you'll create a secret place where you develop a personal relationship with the Lord. You want your faith to grow. You want to be filled. We do. Then it's this prayer. Nothing will supercharge your faith like having prayer with the Lord communication with the Lord. God speaks to us. We speak to the Lord. It's a two-way conversation. We're in his word. We're filling ourselves. And to close, this is what beats exhaustion. This is what beats worry. You can have a full chuck schedule, but I'm telling you, it can be rich and satisfying when you will first of all fill yourself with the Lord. 
And remember this, professionals don't apply. God's not wanting anything perfect or professional. He wants to hear from you. In your simple way of talking to him, he's created you. So don't be intimidated because of Jesus. The Bible says go right in to that secret place of that throne room. Make your petitions known to God. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, God, that you are the original filler. Lord, and it's not just filler like that fills a package, but it's filler that is good, wholesome, life-giving, Lord. It's, as your word said, it's descriptive of living water. Water to live on. Water to do life with. Water that fills our life so that our relationships and everything we put our hand to do is blessed and filled with power and filled with your anointing, Lord. God, so as we stand here this morning, Lord, each one of us is a human being and we need filling. I need filling, God. Help us to not lean into, well, I'll just do it, <laughs> trying to match wits with what only I can do in my own strength, God. That's all good and fine to be disciplined and to have a routine, but Lord, help us to see there's a deeper, deeper level that we have a soul that needs filling. We have a spirit. And you promised when we would fill that, other areas of our life would bloom. Other areas of our life would be blessed, Lord. God, so thank you for my brothers and sisters who started out this week by putting you first. Wow, what a testimony. What a great thing of all the people that are here this morning and online that are seeking you first. And you, we know you're going to fill the rest of our week, Lord. Fill this week as we move into Easter. God, help us to see the value of your word. Help us to see the value of prayer and connecting with you on an ongoing basis, God. We want to be a full church. We want to be filled individuals. We don't want to be broke down and weary and worn out. God, but we want your Holy Spirit, God, to be flowing up, Lord, to be flowing out, God, blessing those around us, Father. Lord, so I pray for my brothers and sisters here. I pray for those online. Lord, I pray for everyone who's going to watch this word, God, that you would direct us and help us and guide us and give us hope, Lord, and give us that favor, God, that pushes forth, God. Lord, help us to shine brightly for you, God, as you continue to fill us with what is right, Lord. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Oh, God, people said in Jesus' name. Amen. Give him one more hand, clap of praise. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. We thank you for one another, Lord. And we bless your holy name. Amen. How many know you're better for being in church this morning? Can you affirm that? Amen. Thank you for coming. God bless you. God bless your week. We'll see you next Sunday morning for Easter. Bring people with you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being at C3 Church this morning.